Am I audible now? Is it audible? Yes. You are okay. audible, Anu, but a uh, lot of disturbance. That's because the cell phone is there. So you have to put one on mute because yeah. there is a lot of echo coming in. Now is it? Uh, now is there an echo? No. Now it seems to be better. Uh, not an issue. You can. Yeah. Now there is no noise. Yeah. Shujata? Yeah, no. S-V-E-C-W-N. Sri Vishnu, Sri Vishnu, Vishnu College of Engineering. Sri Vishnu College of Engineering. I don't know what the W stands for. Uh, Sri Vishnu Engineering College for Women. Na. I think it is for women because I see all girl students only. Mm. I did the same thing. I clarified with them in the chat box. Okay, Manoj Kumar is, I think, from the SRM Ramapuram. You'll be calling uh, professor. I already called him, Anu. He confirmed okay. that he will join. Okay. Thank you. Robin? Yes, ma'am. I am just stepping out for a one minute and I'll come back. Yeah. Okay. Okay, ma'am, I'm also there, ma'am. How did you become unmuted on your own? No, she is logged in the Bell's PG meeting. Of course. Okay. Not a problem. Okay, good. Okay, so I'll be there in just a minute. I will go on mute.
Robert, the format and the idle portraying la. Can you put the format? They have to name themselves, college name, student, faculty, and in the chat box. Yeah. Thank you. No, you still have a disturbance now. Earlier it was okay. Now you have a disturbance in your audio. Jata, is it better? Yeah, but uh, still the browser has joined. Yeah, 
वन सेकेंड Dr. K V G is also there. Probably good morning. afternoon. Good I'm afternoon, here. Dr. Manu Santanam. Good morning. Morning. This is sorry. Good morning, Dr. Manu Santanam. Yeah. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning, <laughs> sir. Yeah. You can probably unmute uh, Dr. K V G also. He's from N I T. Correct. Uh, uh, what is this? K. Surat Kal. Surat Kal. Karnataka and Surat Kal. Yeah. N I T K. So. Uh, Dr. Manu Santanam. Dr. K V G actually. Uh, is part of our uh, pal scheme and he takes care of the v labs okay. he heads the v labs uh, in uh, nitk and uh, we have successfully enrolled 27 of our colleges last year and gone on to make several v labs for them and we have given them experiential learning as well okay. because of that good morning so, professor kvg he can unmute himself i am able to unmute now yeah, yes, good morning sir. professor kvg Yeah. Good morning, sir. How are you? We were waiting for this opportunity to hear from you about uh, 3D printing the house. Sure, <laughs> sir. Thank you. Because yes, we work in 3D printing, but of course in <laughs> FDM and uh, powder, foams, etc. We have an HP 580, and that is some statistics machines and uh, some local machines. of course we have a larger group in the engineering design and mechanical engineering division that work a uh, lot more on 3d printing uh, in our case we collaborate with a iit metra startup which does the printing for us yeah good morning pvm good morning sujatha can you hear me clearly yes yes pvm we are not able to see your video i think you haven't turned yeah, yeah. it on I have got it on, Professor Manu Santanam. Good morning, sir. Good morning. Good morning. Thank you for accepting the session. Oh, sure. sure. My pleasure. Uh, Doctor Manu Santanam, you have a presentation to share. Yeah. So uh, I'll. Uh, I mean, once the session starts, uh, you will be able to share it uh, from your screen. Okay. Sure. I've given the share permission, so that should. Sure. Two more minutes, and I think we'll wait. Uh, we'll start sharp at ten thirty. We are also live, sir, uh, on YouTube, and uh, we have viewers there as well. SVE sub CW is a new college that has joined the PVM Sri Vishnu, and it I think it's Engineering College for Women as well, just like our VC. Oh, I see. Okay. Uh, welcome to Sri Vishnu. It's a pleasure to invite you into our first into your first program with PALS. I think they are muted. Maybe if nobody will be uh, able to unmute themselves. Oh, okay, okay, no problem. That's fine. As long as they hear us, it's okay. Yeah. So all of them can very uh, liberally use the chat window to chat and uh, express okay. their views. Yeah. Sure.
can we get started uh, it's 10:30 and we have 200 participants uh, with us here and close to 15 to 20 participants in the youtube uh, live also good i think we will get more It's yeah. a good so start. I think we should get started, uh, Dr. Manusantanam. Is it good? Uh, yeah, we can sure. get started. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. One second. So good morning to all present here. Hope all of you are staying safe and doing well. A warm welcome to one and all for this special session from PALS on India's first 3D printed house by Dr. Manusantanam. uh my name is sujatha and i'll be a virtual host for the day today most of you who have attended the past pals events you may be familiar with the event format but i am repeating it once again for the participants who are attending this event for the first time uh we'll start with a brief introduction to the about the speaker and then the actual session will be by dr manu santanam and that will go for approximately uh, 90 minutes so one and a half hours is what we estimate all participants will stay muted until the uh, you know the session is uh, being presented by the speaker after the session the floor will be open for q and a uh, there are two ways you can raise your you can ask your questions one is you can raise your hands get yourself unmuted and ask the question directly to the speaker or alternatively you can also post your question in the chat box i will be the moderator as a moderator i will read it out for for you to the speaker and you know you can hear the answers uh, from the speaker and those of you who are watching it live from the youtube may post your question there in the live chat and we will get them answered at the end of the session we will be circulating a feedback form for you to fill with this i conclude and i now request our pals chairman pv mohan to give the introductory address over to you pvm thank you sujatha respected members of management faculty and ec members of our partner institutes as well as our prospective member colleges industry partners alumni friends from the iit fraternity pals champions and students a very warm welcome to you all dr manu santanam professor department of civil engineering iit madras also a very warm welcome to you sir thank you for agreeing to deliver your exciting lecture today titled india's first 3d printed house This venture has been in the news headlines just a few months ago and we are all waiting in anticipation and excitement to understand this new technology which has the potential to revolutionize the global construction industry. These are also very difficult times due to the pandemic and I commiserate with all for the loss of our near and dear ones and friends. we had decided to give our pals activities a short break due to this calamitous situation and you might have observed no events over the last two months we have all felt the need to keep in touch with you from time to time and hence we are gathered today for this exciting event i would like to take a few minutes to give a brief introduction to pals especially for our prospective college partners whom we have invited today for getting a flavor of the pals ambience pals is an initiative of iit alumni with a mission of adding value to engineering education in our partner colleges to this end we use facilities and resources of iit madras as well as a excellent pool of iit faculty and alumni from industry over the years we have become the fulcrum of a very successful social outreach program of iit madras a core group of iit alumni champion volunteers coordinate and plan various events during the academic year for participating colleges like yourselves we provide a 360 degree bouquet of events catering for the management faculty and students of our partner colleges what started off as a modest initiative back in 
with six partner colleges and one event has now expanded to almost 30 partner colleges and more than 15 events today and growing. Our programs carried out in virtual mode last year have impacted almost 10,000 students and 2,000 faculty members. Our theme for the new academic year 2021-22 is industry century delivery of programs where each and every event will have an industry and entrepreneurial focus. Special efforts are being made to make strategic tie-ups with reputed organizations in order to involve each of them in many events across the academic year. Some of our flagship events are Industry Speaks Lecture Series, Analyze Case Studies, Innova Innovation Competition, Hackathons, Virtual Labs Initiative with NITK Suratkal as technology partner, socially relevant rural projects with assistance of RUTAC from IITM, industry visits and faculty development programs, and so on. We are also making great efforts to exponentially increase internship opportunities with assistance of our partner industries. I would now like to introduce our speaker of the day, Dr. Manu Santanam to you. Dr. Manu Santanam is a professor in building technology, construction management division, and currently the head of the Department of Civil Engineering, IIT Madras. He completed his bachelor's degree in civil engineering from IIT Madras in 1994. He did his master's and later PhD from Purdue University in USA. He joined IIT Madras as assistant professor in the BTCM division of the Department of Civil Engineering. He became associate professor in March 2009 and was promoted as professor in July 2013. He teaches undergraduate and graduate level courses, mainly in the areas of construction materials, concrete technology, non-destructive testing, and characterization of construction materials. His research domains cover cement chemistry and multi-scale characterization of concrete, including non-destructive testing, assessment of deterioration mechanisms in concrete and masonry structures, 3D printing of concrete structures, concrete durability, and use of supplementary cementing materials. He's also a part of the National Center for Safety of Heritage Structures in IITM, which focuses on scientific methods for conservation of heritage structures. He has co-authored more than 70 international journal publications, 30 national journal publications, and about 70 conference papers on construction material properties and performance. His contributions extend to several book chapters, which he co-authored with national and international researchers. He is also active in various professional associations such as ACI, ICI, and RILEM, and has been distinguished as a RILEM Fellow in 2019. He is also a member of editorial board in leading international journal on construction materials. In short, I tried my best to compress and make the CV as short as possible, but Professor has got so many achievements it was very difficult. I had to read out every sentence from his CV because he has so many distinguished accomplishments. I now have great pleasure in handing you over to Dr. Manu Santanam and we look forward to a really exciting session ahead. Thank you and enjoy your session. Thank you very much, Mr. Moon, and uh, thanks for the kind words. Uh, I'm very happy to actually uh, share this platform. I have been once associated with PALS before. I think that was uh, nearly three or four years back. Uh, and of course, those were the days when we could actually do a live session in ICSR and directly interact face to face with people. Uh, and uh, for some reason, all those uh, days have totally gone out of the memory because we've always been in front of the computer for so long that this seems to be the new normal now. Uh, but as you rightly said, uh, uh, one of the major advantages of this platform is that we are able to reach out to many more people and uh, and probably promote a lot better interaction 
all across the country without really having to move from our uh, uh, our own uh, i mean our own individual places yeah so it's indeed a pleasure once again to join today and uh, share our experiences about 3d printed house uh, of course this is a, a, a rather new development uh, the house itself has been uh, or was completed in uh, october last year but technically it was only inaugurated this year so we've had uh, quite a bit of uh, news coming about uh, coming out about it i just wanted to share with you the kind of journey that uh, we undertook to really get to this level uh, it's a journey over about 4 years which helped us uh, get to this level and uh, we still have a lot more work to do to really catch up with the leading groups in the rest of the world but that's what i want to share with you uh, as to what needs to be done what kind of systematic uh, scientific approaches need to be taken to really get to this uh, kind of a uh, uh, to make your research into a reality okay so uh, i'll let me share my screen now yeah i hope you can see my presentation i'll just put that on slide show mode okay uh, is my presentation visible in uh, full screen mode no it is in the design mode only it's still not in the slide show mode Oh, really? Yeah. Okay. Uh, stop sharing again. Okay. How about now? Yes, sir. It is fine. It's fine. Okay. Yep. So, so the other screen. So. is on my my head will be turned to the other screen so <laughs> so anyway uh, good morning once, once again and i'm going to talk today about india's uh, first uh, 3d printed house uh, before i start my talk i should uh, let you all know that uh, the work that i'm going to describe here is actually a collaborative work between of course our department at iit madras and also twasta manufacturing solutions which is actually a startup company uh, founded by uh, uh, our own graduates IIT Madras graduates from mechanical and material science, mechanical engineering and material science, not civil engineering, but these guys are mainly from the manufacturing type of streams, and they are the ones who have come up with uh, the uh, uh, manufacturing of 3D printers, and they have taken that up as a profession, and they are doing it for quite a while now. Uh, for the last uh, four to five, nearly five years, we've been associated with them because we started truly working. towards uh, having a research program in uh, 3d printing only by the end of 2016 that's when we really started and uh, twasta has been with us throughout and together with twasta iit madras has established what we call as the imprint or uh, iit madras printability lab uh, so all the work that you see here is because of the collaboration it's not just because of iitm it's not just because of me and it's uh, because of a large team that has really worked to make this happen right so what exactly is 3d printing uh, now we know that in conventional manufacturing we take a very large block and use all kinds of machining like uh, cutting milling turning grinding and so on to cut the larger block into a shape that we really desire for the manufacturing component of course we don't do that in construction in construction we have a form work we put steel we put concrete and we create the composite or if it's a masonry structure we put brick by brick and join it with mortar and then build up the wall so that's basically the kind of construction methodology is that we typically follow but truly speaking from the field of manufacturing the usual practice is to do what is known as subtractive manufacturing where you take a larger block and cut it down into a smaller uh, object now with 3d printing it belongs to a family of techniques called additive manufacturing the idea here is to build up layer by layer so you build up your structure or build up your machine component for instance layer by layer where you do additive manufacturing or deposition of layers in the shape that you desire so instead of actually creating a large block and cutting into smaller pieces and uh, wasting a lot of material that uh, in that kind of a process here you are depositing your material in the desired shape without really wasting any excess material so that's the major advantage of additive manufacturing and the advantage also relates to the fact that today we can actually computerize and control these operations quite easily uh, and it, and the 
command that you give is essentially quite similar to the command that you give to a regular printer, which does a two-dimensional print by uh, either by laser process or by depositing ink, right? It's the same kind of thing with 3D printing also. So the one aspect that you, were, you would have already un understood is that 3D printing leads to lesser use of material or rather less wastage of material. That, that's a very important point to take away from this process that primarily started from the manufacturing industry and has made a very large uh, uh, impact on the medical industry also. Medical instrumentation, uh, stents and valves and things like that, people are increasingly 3D printing it because it's very, uh, uh, very much possible to really get complex shapes printed where earlier to mold it and create it would really require a lot of work. Okay, so in medical or me in, in medicine, 3D printing has really shown the way to print a lot of things. Now, today they are even printing biological tissue. So you can imagine the kind of strides that this uh, technology has taken in that. Uh, manufacturing, again, 3D printing is the uh, uh, most preferred way to, to make complex machine parts now. Um, and uh, again, it's shown the way that we can actually do a lot more complex things. Anyway, but we are talking about construction. So in construction 3D printing, there are different types of ways in which you can do the construction. So one of the common examples of a 3D printer is this gantry type printer. So you can see this is the gantry frame, right? You can see the frame here. That's the gantry frame. And you have this movable gantry that moves on the rails on top of the frame. So, and you have a movable axis in this direction also. Essentially this gantry frame and this movable axis allows X and Y direction movement. And this, um, the Z direction movement is controlled by this axis here. So all you have is basically a mobile sort of a platform. It's almost like a regular gantry that you see in most workshops, except that here you have this Y axis, uh, sorry, Z axis gantry, which is also carrying the printing head with it, which deposits the material. So this is called a gantry type or a frame type system. The alternative to this is also you can have a robot. You can have a centrally placed robot and all the robot does is reaches different sections with its arm and deposits the material where it's required. So that's a robotic arm printer. So extrusion based techniques, that means you're extruding the material. Uh, I don't know how many of you are from Tamil Nadu or uh, nearby areas. You'll all know about the process of making muruku, right? How do you make muruku? You make the dough and then you have a mold. You put the dough in the mold and you basically press out and there are different shapes at the bottom through which the extrusion actually happens and this material comes out. So you have the dough which is prepared in a particular consistency that it is able to get pushed out of the small orifice at the bottom. And it also has the consistency that it can maintain its shape when it comes out. You have the star shape, the round shape and so on and so forth. So that actually is the very primitive example of 3D printing, truly speaking. And that's what we are doing with Construction 3D printing is that we are taking concrete of a certain consistency and trying to push it through a nozzle so that it comes out as a single unit and is able to maintain its shape after coming out. Okay, I'll come to that in, in a little bit more time. But apart from this extrusion based system, there is also the possibility of using what, what is called binder jetting. So here what you have is you have a bed of your material. Let's say cement and sand mixed together. You make a bed with it and you just spray water on top of it wherever you need the structure to be printed. Okay. So water will only react with the cement at that particular location and not throughout. Right. And what you do is you continue putting layer by layer of sand and cement and then spraying water wherever you want it. And ultimately you get a larger structure, but you need to waste away a lot of the unused cement and sand to get your actual molded structure. So that's called binder jetting, but that's not really uh, advantageous to us from a large scale construction 3D printing point of view. So we'll, go, we'll talk primarily about extrusion based printing. So what advantage does it bring in construction? Now we know very well that in conventional concrete construction, there are several processes. The first process obviously is to put the formwork, right? We put the formwork, we then put the reinforcement inside and then we pour the concrete once the concrete hardens, we have to remove the formwork, clean it up and reassemble in a new location so that the construction can continue. Okay. Now, what advantage does 3D printing bring? It's actually going to reduce the amount of time that you spend in making formwork because in 3D printing, you're printing the material in the shape that you want. You don't need a formwork anymore. Okay. You are printing the material without any formwork. 
So you can create a wall without the need for a form book. So if you really look into uh, uh, most of the papers that deal with construction productivity, <clears throat> you'll find that nearly 30 to 40% of the cost of construction and nearly 60% of the time that construction takes is attributable to form work. Okay, that means to place and remove and clean form work, it takes that much amount of time. So imagine a project in which you don't need to do that anymore. So you're able to save significant bits of time. And obviously time is money, right? And form work also costs money. Of course, you are also investing a larger amount of money in your 3D printing system and possibly your material may be a little bit more expensive than conventional concrete. Nevertheless, you are saving significant amounts of time and money in the construction of your building. The other major advantage with 3D printing, which is not easily possible with formed concrete, is that you can get geometric and design flexibility. Supposing you have a curved wall, which has multiple curvatures, Imagine trying to create form work to assemble that together. And that's going to be a big challenge. Okay. Instead of that, if you're able to simply take a printer and print the concrete in a nice wavy texture, you don't have to even worry about form work. So you have saved the material, you've saved costs. At the same time, you've got some sort of a shape, which is not conceivable with conventional construction. Now, if you start making all rectangular structures with 3D printing, you'll probably not realize its benefit at all. So you have to make use of this fact that you can now print complex shapes to really make the best out of this technology. When, whenever we think of building our house, we always have this nice plan of rectangles joined together, boxes joined together, right? We need to come out of that really if you have to realize the potential of something like 3D printing. So this is where the civil engineers have to be in consonance with the architects. Architects can really bring in a lot, lot more interesting designs to the table and civil engineers can no longer say that, no, we can't make this because it's too complex. Today, it is not complex with 3D printing, it is made possible. So these are the major advantages and we really need to make use of these advantages to come up with very innovative and interesting structures. There are several examples of 3D printed uh, uh, concrete being executed across the world. Different kinds of uh, 3D printing robots are used. Many of them are these frame-based systems, either the X, Y, Z type frame, or you have the uh, cylindrical coordinate system type frames that also can be used. Here, this is an example of a robotic printer, much more efficient because all you need is a single robot connected to the concrete supply. And this robot sits in a single location and it's able to print all around it. In a frame-based system, the difficulty is that the frame has to be larger than the structure that you're trying to build, right? The frame has to be slightly larger than the structure you're trying to build. That's the only problem with the frame-based system. Now. The other alternative is you can build smaller segments and assemble it, and which is what we have done. And that's what I'll share with you later. And again, an example of that, of course, you can also see that amongst all the printers from around the world, we've also shown the printer that we've been using from Twasta. They are the manufacturers of this printer here. This is just, again, a gantry-based system. Now, a simple example is shown here from a Chinese uh, factory where they're doing 3D printing. Again, you can see the gantry system. I'll, I'll wait. Yeah. So this is the gantry and you can see this is the uh, movement of the robot on the gantry. And the robot is basically extruding the concrete and printing it in a desired shape. It's printing these wall elements and you can see that it's not printing solid wall elements. It's got cavities inside. So you have a perimeter wall and then you have these ribs uh, to increase the stiffness inside. And you're not filling the entire area with concrete or entire volume with concrete. This indicates that you can exercise a major saving in the material by doing this, this kind of a print because you don't put concrete everywhere. You only put concrete where it's needed. Okay. So what is done after the elements are printed, you can, you can see the printed elements here. After they are printed, they are stacked and then cured. Concrete has to be cured. You can't really avoid that. Concrete has to be cured to ensure that the cement and water will react and produce the required strength. Okay. Once the concrete curing is completed, it can be brought to the site and assembled. For assembly, you probably need to join segments. Joinery can be done with masonry-based systems like mortar, for instance. Or if you have uh, uh, provisions like this inside the elements, you can see these are hollow sections, which can easily be inserted. Uh, you can insert reinforcement bars into these hollow sections and use that to really join your segments together, right? If you want 
uh, higher structural capacity. So that's what has been done. In this case, you can see one segment here, one more segment sitting on top there, and they're being joined on the inside by reinforcing bar. You can see that happening here. The segment is getting placed here, and it will be then joined by inserting a reinforcing bar that connects the top segment to the bottom segment. So this is an interesting operation, which is obviously resembling what we typically know of the precast operation. In precasting, also we do the same. We make these reinforced concrete elements in the factory, then bring it to the site and simply connect it to the other elements and make a precast house. But what is the difference here? Again, the main difference here is that you're not using form work. You're printing the shape directly. There is no use of form work. You're basically printing the shape and then you're bringing it to the uh, uh, to the uh, to the site and assembling it there. Okay. Just one second. Uh, I, I'll, I'll need to attend this call. Just one second. Sorry. Sorry, sorry for the interruption. So again, we have a scenario here where we can actually replicate the precast operations, except that in this case, we have uh, an uh, operation where we don't use any form work and we can print multiple number of elements, increasing the productivity of the precast operation. Sorry, one second. I'm sorry about that interruption. So, uh, yeah, so as I was saying, you're trying to increase productivity because you can print as many elements as the space you have in your factory, right? You don't need to really worry about how many molds you actually have and how much, how many elements can you print because of the availability of the molds, okay? So these are some of the advantages that you can clearly see from this uh, Chinese experience. Now, as far as houses are concerned, 3D printing has been done across the world and people have shown with various demonstrations. For example, you can see this house in Moscow that was printed by this centrally placed robot. So you can see the robot has a movable arm which deposits the concrete in a given shape. And then this entire house was able to get printed in a matter of a few days, okay? You can have even higher stories constructed. We'll come to that a little bit later to understand how this can be made possible. Single story construction is very easily accomplished with 3D printing. You can see there are multiple houses that were printed. In fact, in this case, this company, Chinese company called Winson Global, printed components for 10 houses in a single day. You can imagine the extent of productivity you can get. You continuously print these components, cure them, and then bring to site and you can assemble 10 houses from components that were printed in a single day. Shows you the extent of productivity you can get. Again, more interesting examples. This is a house designed by a company called Icon. Okay, uh, more interesting to look at as compared to the Chinese houses. Now, this is again a structure that is more fancy. It's a, it's called the concrete castle. Of course, it's not a, a real castle size. It's more of a house size. But again, this was just done to demonstrate what you can get in terms of architectural features. So all these were three printed sections. Mind you, there is no reinforcement in the structure, no steel at all, okay? And most of these houses that I've shown you, uh, the single story houses, they also don't have any steel in them. Again, this is a, a, a lot of printing being done in Dubai by this company called Apiscore. And you can see this. Uh, so how easily you can blend square and rectangle elements with circle elements. That's the primary example of how 3D printing should be done. You can see this nice circular element here. Again, semicircular horseshoe type elements, right? And how well they are connected to the main structure. So, and you can all see that very clearly, all the walls are cavity walls. There are many advantages to having cavity walls. One is obviously that you're using less material. Second is cavity walls or rather cavities or ribbed walls because ribs are needed to increase the stiffness, otherwise you'll get collapse of the wall while printing. So uh, the advantage here obviously is that you now have a much better insulation of the house against heat and sound, because if you have cavities, obviously heat and sound cannot get in that easily. So you can also try and fill up other uh, uh, barriers, heat and sound barriers inside these cavities to further increase the efficiency of the heating and cooling that you do inside the house so that the external environment does not disturb your house very much. 
Again, more examples from Mexico. There's a cluster of houses that were printed by this company called Lycon in Mexico. Again, all individual single story houses. That's where the maximum impact can be made. Multi-story DS, there are challenges. I'll talk about that a little bit later. Uh, this is a, again showing you the, the kind of intricate shapes that can be created. You can, you can see the kind of shape that has been created in this building by this company called Vinci Construction. Okay. This is a Chinese construction where they have built these bus shelters. You can see the direction of printing is in this way. Okay. The layer by layer deposition is done in this direction. And all you have done is simply taken the material and tilted it to make the bus stop. Look at this furniture. Benches created with 3D printed concrete and again, very interesting designs. More examples here, you can see this nice, uh, it's only a security shed, but they wanted to see uh, how well they could actually do this. You can see the design, it almost looks like a, one of those uh, bamboo uh, and uh, straw type uh, houses, right? Uh, this was an experiment done by the US Army Corps of Engineers to build army barracks with 3D printing to make sure that they could actually start building in location, <laughs> locations where conventional construction is not possible. That was the idea. And that is one of the major uh, uh, thought processes going to the future is to how can we execute construction in difficult to approach areas? For instance, if you have to build a shelter in Ladakh, right? Uh, or Siachen, you can't do normal construction there. And uh, you know that typical regular tents and all are not re really very safe for most of the workers there and who need, also need to be protected from the cold not just from the enemy side, right? So in this case, you need uh, technologies that can be deployed in those locations. And we are looking increasingly at something like 3D printing to accomplish those kinds of uh, operations. Again, just showing you the limits of what 3D printing can do, what kind of columns are created here, you can see very clearly. Architecturally, you can design things now, which were not conceivable earlier because of the limitations of construction. Uh, 3D printing has also been done for bridges. This is actually a pedestrian bridge in Madrid, where the smaller sections were 3D printed and then jointed together. Uh, this has also been done for uh, a post-tension bridge. You can see that these are segmented 3D printed segments, okay, which were then connected together. And through the cavities, these post-tensioning cables were actually sent in and this post-tension segment was prepared based on uh, yeah, 3D printing. <clears throat> now, how is 3D printing going to help us in our housing needs? Now, I know that you may have come across several of these figures. I'm just presenting one of the uh, possibilities here. Urban population in India is to be close to 1 billion in 2050. So, of course, our population itself is uh, about 1.4 billion right now. And uh, imagine 1 billion of those will be in cities by 2050. That's a very large number. And we all know very clearly that India has a housing problem. We don't have enough housing for the population that we have here. By 2030, it is estimated that 100 million houses, 10 crore houses will be needed okay, to house all the population that is coming to the urban areas, obviously, and also increasingly in settlements away from the urban locations and peri-urban or semi-urban locations. Now, uh, in India, there's been a lot of work in the recent past where people have, uh, the government and uh, the industry has try, tried to promote technologies that have the potential for uh, rapid housing, okay, for creating large number of houses in a short period of time. And this was a big, uh, big uh, program uh, thrown open by the Honorable Prime Minister in 2019. The Global Housing Technology Challenge actually came about in 2019. And uh, the idea was to uh, look at several technologies and identify several of them to really answer India's housing problems. In fact, uh, six of those technologies have been chosen to promote these uh, special projects all across the country, including one in Chennai. Okay, They are uh, using six different technologies to construct some multi-story structures to uh, show the way for mass housing in the future. But what comes to light is that it's not possible with just a few technologies to really answer this problem. You need a toolkit of several technologies that can be employed to really build the houses that we want all across the country. And 3D printing has shown to be one of the promising technologies. Okay, And primarily from the viewpoint of increasing productivity and reducing the time required to produce houses. Now, 
why should we print houses why why 3d printing we know that uh, for mass housing for uh, multi story structures for instance precasting is a very viable technology people are working today even with uh, uh, the 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 concrete wall concept myva type construction where they are building single uh, completing a single story in a matter of 7 to 10 days and moving to the next floor and so on and so forth why 3d printing in this because obviously as of now 3d printing is going to be a much more expensive solution we're going to be using more expensive material reinforcing is going to be difficult and so on and so forth the ultimate selling point of 3d printing is the individual customization that is possible when you talk about large precast structures multi story dwellings and so on and so forth we want to recreate the same unit multiple number of times only then it becomes viable with 3d printing we are not really bound by that each and every house can be different okay each and every house that you construct with 3d printing can be different can be individually customized to the needs of the customer because you can print in any form or shape you don't need to repeat the same structure every time of course if it's a multi story building there has to be some repetition but if individual dwellings are to be constructed for instance a large settlement of 500 houses has to be done in a single location the te typical technique would be to approve one plan and then construct all the houses with the same plan in 3d printing you don't need to limit yourself to that so it will allow you to continue with much larger uh, uh, number of houses which are individually customized to the needs of the people now the other aspect is it's structurally efficient because we can now design it in such a way that it is not constrained by the the production of the concrete so we can make it structurally efficient and reduce the material usage making it a lot more uh, economical also and weather proofing as i said because of cavity walls you can actually get weather proofing and also utilities like your plumbing and electrical can be within the wall itself okay if you plan it well enough you can do that and uh, again there was a question actually that was uh, given by one of the attendees previously as to how we can actually tie this with the uh, virtual techniques like uh, for instance uh, new lean construction techniques like build, uh, building information modeling certainly that can be a very large step moving forward because you can now integrate the provision of utilities into the structure and uh, ensure that you are able to actually bring in the design of the plumbing and electrical systems as you are constructing the building and it will save a lot of time to really do the overall construction the other possibility again is you can build houses and dwellings in terrains which were difficult to reach with conventional construction so the portability of the equipment and material can make it possible to deliver quality houses in different locations okay so that in a nutshell is the advantage of 3d printing of course i am saying this assuming that in one or two years this technology will be at a level that can be a solution and when it is a solution these will be the advantages right now as i am speaking to you today it is not a 100% proven solution we have only shown demonstrations and you need several more of demonstration structures to really show the effectiveness of this technology right so again as i said are we ready for deployment uh, the focus is as i said currently on pilot projects there are several challenges where we need to really meet to go to the next level one is automation of reinforcement placement can we place reinforcement in the structure and get suitable performance can we finish the structure to the needs of the customer i'll i'll show you the uh, the issues with finishing later right the other aspect is what about the other components we are printing walls and columns which are nice vertical prints no problem what about slabs what about foundations how do we do this can we efficiently print these or would we still need to go to the conventional form work based uh, design because again printing something horizontally is not making a lot of sense okay i'll come to that again later the major aspect as far as housing construction is concerned is that whatever you build has to comply with the codal requirements and the codes themselves need to be now created first of all to accommodate this new type of technology otherwise it will be very difficult to really pr proceed in that direction okay how do we optimally plan integration of the utilities like electrical and plumbing while we are constructing okay can we integrate the 3d printing software with building and inf information modeling software bim to really integrate the planning of these utilities how well can we bring this in and again without supply chain support can we do construction off the grid that means in areas that were 
almost impossible to reach. Can we deploy these printers in much more compact fashion on the back of a truck to these locations with the material and complete the construction where otherwise it would have been difficult to obtain conventional co uh, construction equipment. Okay. So there are also other challenges of obviously you know very well all those, all those of you who are in civil engineering and all those of you who are practicing civil engineers know that in general technology adaptation the construction industry is not very high construction industry is generally risk covers okay and it is driven a lot by cost initial cost is what people think about a lot they don't really think about okay what would be the projected cost 10 years down the line can i save some on maintenance can i really have a much more efficient system built up with maybe higher cost today but 10 10 years down the line it may not really project itself to be very high there is definitely a fear of new technology amongst consumers. People want to go with the tried and tested methods because building a house obviously is a dream of most of the middle class Indians, right? They want to build their own houses. And when they build their own houses, obviously, why should they take the risk of selecting a new, new technology? They would rather go with something which is already tried and tested. There's a lack of an ecosystem to scale up. Uh, see, again, we need a larger number of consultants, architects, and practitioners who need to be trained in how this technology needs to be implemented. And again, as I said, we are already only focusing on pilot projects. When we start extending only then the information will flow out and more and more people will be capable of handling construction with this kind of a technology. Again, regulatory approvals, we don't really have the data to get those certifications, standardization, and so on and so forth. And transportation infrastructure is not very easy everywhere. Right? You know very well our condition of our transportation infrastructure. Roads are not great. Uh, we don't always have the best kind of trucks everywhere. And again, moving expensive equipment and materials to different locations, it's a big challenge still. So it, it will take some time for us to accomplish that. Okay. But one thing we need to understand is that uh, if you look at the other countries where 3D printing has really made a big mark, for instance, China, US, Germany, and Netherlands, a major uh, component of that progress has been because of the involvement of the industry. And in India also, we are looking forward to the industry and in really coming and embracing this technology to really take it forward to the next level. So without industry support, we'll not really get anywhere. I mean, we are an academic institution. Our aim is to promote research and 3D printing gives us a lot of nice avenues for research. Okay, but then that's not the solution. If we really want to take it up to the industrial level, industry has to participate. Right, so let me take you th through our journey in pictures to really show you how we built up our house. I've shown you several things so far as to what is required to actually make 3D printing happen, what are the benefits and how can it be a solution to our housing needs. So we started off with this very small scale printer. As you can see, it's a almost a bench top type system. Same X and Y gantry. You have a movable axis which can move up and down along this frame. And then you have a, a pipe that can deposit the material. We tried different examples of the nozzle, which could use, which could be used to extrude material. We extruded several types of material in the beginning. We tried with lime, we tried with clay. Okay, all these are just our initial trials. And then we started getting into more serious printing with concrete. So this is the dimension of the printer that I'm showing you. This is the pipe carrying the material, and that's the nozzle from which the extrusion actually happens. The nozzle itself, in this case, we used a rectangular nozzle of 30 by 20 millimeters okay and uh, our initial experiments were with uh, a fixed cementitious material to aggregate ratio of 40 to 60 and i'll come to uh, other important characteristics please remember your material should be consistent as i said i compared this to the dough we use for muruk right the consistency should be such that with less effort it should come out of the mold it should come out of the nozzle but when, once you Lay it here, for instance, one, once you put the layer here, it should retain its shape nicely. It should not start deforming. Normal concrete, you know very well, when you put it on the ground, it starts moving because it's got some fluidity to it. We design it with some workability. But here we need to design it with a controlled workability that allows it to get out of the nozzle. But when it comes to its required position, it should not move from there. More importantly, when my next layer comes on top, when I print one more layer on top, because the layer below is still fresh. It is not set. Okay, If it's set and you place the next layer, there will be no bonding between layers. There's no point. right? So here what you're doing is you're printing the second layer while the first layer is still fresh so that they develop a bond. 
So you are adding additional mass on top of this printed layer, which will again cause some level of displacement. You don't want that to displace so much. Okay. So again, you need to have consistency in concrete to ensure that when you keep on putting more and more layers on top, the layers on bottom don't start flowing out. They still able, they are still able to maintain their shape. And rheologically, if you look at rheology, the factor that controls that is called the yield stress. Again, I don't think uh, this uh, lecture would need to go into that kind of a depth, but uh, that, that is something which we focus a lot in research is to define the flow characteristics of the material. And rheologically, one of the characteristics that we want to control is the yield stress. Okay. So there are several things that we need to test the material for. Is it extrudable? Can it come out of the nozzle without breaking? Okay. Is it buildable? Can you print layer upon layer without any deformation? Okay. And can we work with it for a long period of time? It's called open time. How long can we work with this material? And again, how robust is it? Can we make small tweaking in the material uh, design and still expect to get the same performance from it or does it keep changing? Okay. So idea was to create a mix, concrete mixture, which is capable of handling all these things. Right. So we tried several things with this concrete mixture. We printed circular shapes, rectangular shapes, we printed straight lines, and we wanted to see whether the bottom layers were deforming when we put the next layer on top of it and so on and so forth. These are just some initial experiments. And then we need to design now test methods to really understand how to test this material because conventional concrete, what you do, you mix the concrete, you pour it into a cubicle mold. After the cube is cured for a certain period of time, you test the strength, right? But here you can't do that. The material is getting printed. You can't really put it in a cube. So here you're testing the strength of the printed material. So we print four layers like this, and then we compress it and break it in compression. Right. And then we determine the strength based on that. To test the initial workability characteristics, one of the methods that we can employ is the simple flow table test, which all of you may have in your labs anyway. Now, we went a little bit more further into the mechanical characterizations because what happens in a 3D printed structure is obviously you have several interfaces between layers. These are all multiple interfaces that you have between layers. Okay. Now, does that really get to affect your strength or not? And that's what we wanted to find out. So we created several different configurations of printed material and tested all kinds of configurations. So you can see that we tested cubes taken out of these uh, wall type specimens. And we also tested prisms in flexure because we also want flexural strength apart from compressive strength in concrete, right? So we tested everything possible and we tried to achieve the right kind of characteristics to have materials that are suitable to build up a 3D printed structure. And again, these are showing you some of the tests that are being done. This is a flexure test that was done. This is actually a pull-off test where we had these cylindrical uh, specimens drilled out of the layered specimen. And we put this in this fashion here and pulled it off one against the other so that you can actually break the bond here and test what the bond strength actually is and so on. We also had some printed specimens on which we actually did pull-off tests using this pull-off testing equipment just to establish the index properties of these materials. It's not easy to device test. Again, that is another roadblock for us to really get standardized uh, material or standardized testing procedures. Uh, again, these are just some uh, complex shapes that we wanted to prepare and so on. Now, uh, from that smaller printer, we realized that in order to print something bigger, we need to move to a larger printer. So here, we uh, uh, Twasta basically devised this larger printing setup with a printing bed and the gantry here, movable gantry. And the material delivery system was based on this primer and the pump. So you put the concrete after mixing into the primer. The primer pushes the material into the pump. The pump has a backward stroke in which the material gets taken in. Once the pump is full with the material, it has a single forward stroke, which continuously pushes the material out of this pipe to the printing bed. Okay. Now, please remember in a conventional uh, piston based system, you'll have a forward movement and a backward movement. But in this case, you don't want to have the backward movement while printing because then the material will not continuously go to the pipe. You need to have a continuous flow of the material into the pipe for a error free, free printing process. So what we had to do in this case was only have a single uh, pump full extent of concrete. So maximum concrete we could put this inside this pump was about 
75 millimeters sorry uh, 75 kilograms and we had a single forward stroke of the pump to push out that 75 kilogram of material and with that we could actually print out this module this is a 3d printed module of approximately 60 kilograms that we could print out with a single forward stroke of the pump okay so we wanted to create these modules and assemble them into a larger structure but one problem you can uh, envisage here is that when you are trying to push this material through the pump there's a pressure with which you're pushing this material okay in the previous system the material delivery was simple all we had a screw which was continuously pushing the material to the nozzle there was not much pressure on the material here you need to design your mix even more carefully because the pressure that pump gives can lead to a separation of the water from the concrete okay so again you need to devise uh, several test methods to ensure that that does not happen and use that as one of the criteria for your mix design process okay so we call it a desoptivity indicator which was proposed as part of this work right so using this modular printing okay again i'm just showing you the details of the pump so this is the piston pump there's a pump assembly and you can see there's a finalized pump assembly and material that is coming out of the pump here so as i said we use the second stage printer to print these modules each one of them weighing about 60 kilograms okay and these modules were then assembled okay in two halves so you have one half here one half here so each module is about 60 kilograms and each module is about 30 layers in it okay so we have one module of 30 layers one more module of 30 layers making one single module of this entire room that we are printing so you, you see this and then we slowly built it up joining the intermediate layers with mortar and sometimes we also laid this textile fabric to ensure that we increase the strength of the joint sufficiently and this is the completed joint structure you can see here okay and show you more one more picture with a roof of course of course the roof is a wooden roof in this case it was not really printed okay and this was inaugurated by a representative from the ministry of housing and urban affairs uh, she's here with the team uh, of course from iitm myself professor koshi vargis and professor benny rafael and these other three members santosh aditya and uh, vidya shankar they are founding members of this company swasta Okay, we also had a workshop in 3D printing where the Honorable Secretary from the Housing Ministry also participated and they also visited our uh, site with the structure as well as we had a demonstration for them for the printing operations. We also printed other uh, simpler elements which could also be interesting from an architectural perspective. Uh, we had several furniture elements that got printed. You can see this uh, table nicely assembled, another furniture element here, chairs. Okay, so all these were also printed. Again, these are just showing you the limits of possibilities with 3D printing. You can also print more architectural elements with overhangs and things like that. Of course, this is the initial stages. We have printed much more complicated things than this now. So from this second stage printer, we moved to a larger version so that we could start now printing in place rather than assembling small, small modules together. So here the idea was to print up to a height of about 1.5 meters. So again, the same concept, the size was increased. Only thing here, we had a tandem pump. We had two pumps. So while one pump was pushing forward and delivering the material into the pipe, another pump was actually moving backwards and taking the material from the primer. So we had two primers, as you can see from this picture here. And we also had two pumps, which you are barely able to see from this picture here. Okay. So two primers and two pumps so that we could continuously have an operation where concrete is getting printed. Okay. So here, this is the primer and that's the pump assembly. And that's the pipe that is carrying the material to the nozzle. And that's the detail of the nozzle that is going to deposit the material. And this printer was uh, partially financed by Larson and Tubro LNT, which actually partnered with us in this project. The idea was to create a toilet module. Okay. Uh, this was the design conception of the toilet module. These are the sections printed in concrete. And the base of the toilet module also is printed in concrete. As you can see, this is the horizontal printing. Now, why I was talking about this earlier, printing horizontally does not really make much sense because all you're doing is depositing material in a horizontal fashion. It would be much more simpler for us to print the perimeter and put regular concrete inside, which would be much faster rather than going through all these steps of printing. Printing is more efficient and advantageous when you're printing vertical elements with it, like columns or walls. 
Nevertheless, in this case, LNT wanted us to print everything. So that's what we did. So we printed the entire 2.8 meter tall structure in two modules. One was 1.4 meters and the other was another 1.4 meters, including the base slab and the roof itself. So you can see here, this is the bottom half that is getting printed. We also left uh, pipes inside or rather uh, for the bathroom or toilet utilities to later come in. Okay. You can see different stages of construction. So you see these perimeter walls are only about 40 millimeters in width. Okay, so what happens often is when you start constructing a tall structure with a very thin wall, because of slenderness, it tends to start buckling in the because the concrete is not hard yet, it's still fresh, right? To ensure that that does not happen, we had these uh, steel meshes placed every five, six layers to ensure that there's sufficient bit of uh, restraint from these uh, uh, for these walls to start buckling outwards. This is the lower half that is completed here. Okay. And that's the upper half here. The roof is getting printed and this is the completed upper half of the roof. Okay. You can see that the shape is not very good here. We were still experimenting in those days and we were not really able to come up with uh, a very good design as you'll see for the house later. Now what this company Thwasta did was then they moved their printer out of the IITM campus and they moved to this uh, uh, site in Pirangudi where they were able to get a larger workshop space. And what they interestingly did here was the same printer that I showed you previously has now been slightly altered and they have moved this axis. They, they've allowed the movement of this printer along this rail here. They put these rails and the printer can completely be moved along the rails. The advantage there is that they can have multiple printing beds. So this is one bed, this is the next bed, this is the third bed. And they can print multiple components together, right? They can print one component on this bed move the printer, print one more, move the printer, print one more and so on. So this shows you the benefit of industrialized construction that is possible. You don't have to have a single location. You can continuously keep on building elsewhere. Now, if you have to build the same house on site directly, then you need to assemble a printer that is bigger than the house because everything has to be done within the confines of that. And that is too expensive. And this is much more elegant and easier to do. So you can see here the first bed uh, an element getting printed there, second bed, two elements are getting printed, third bed again, two elements are getting printed. So multiple elements are getting printed all together. At one time, five different elements could be printed together. Okay, and you can see some of these elements are curved elements like this one here. Some of these are rectangular elements, but again, similar concept that they have cavities inside which have ribs and the ribs are ensuring that there's sufficient stiffness to the wall. So this is the, uh, these are the elements which have been assembled on the site. You can see here, one layer, second layer, third layer, because overall we wanted to go up to a height of about 4.5 meters. So we had to print it in three layers. So that's one, this two, it's three. Okay. The lintels that you're seeing here, the lintels, which are load bearing elements, they had to be uh, fabricated with conventional concrete because we didn't want to waste time printing those also because you need to have reinforcement inside. So these lintels were simply uh, made with conventional reinforced concrete, precast and brought to site and simply placed. Okay. Of course, in some locations, because of lack of alignment, we had to actually make some masonry walls also to complete the structure. Again, we have not perfected this technology to the level that we can actually deliver an error-free construction. So they, this wall here is coming up because of an error. You can see the actual wall, 3D printed wall is behind. So this error led to the creation of this additional masonry wall in the front. Now, of course, uh, one thing that can be bothersome to some people is that you see the layers in the walls. While some other people feel that this is the uh, unique part of this, it makes it look, at, look interesting. So there are different thought processes that evolve along this, but in this case, we didn't want to take a chance. We didn't want to play too much around, uh, too much with the sensibilities of people. So we plastered it. You can see this is the plaster that we are putting on top, but the issue with putting plaster all over the place is that you don't really get the feel of a 3d printed house in the end, right? It looks like a normal house while we wanted to look like a normal, normal house so that people feel comfortable there. We also left behind some segments you can see here. There are some patches. This patch is 
ex exposing the 3D printed concrete wall. And if you go inside the building also, unfortunately, I don't have that video which these Swasta guys had. I'm, I'm sorry, you, you'll find the video on the on YouTube. It's available in YouTube. It actually walks you through the entire house. There are segments inside also where the uh, wall is exposed and you can actually see the features of the 3D printed wall. Okay, So this is the house that's come up. There's actually a reflective pool outside. Uh, this is a very fancy house. Even inside, it's quite fancy. I don't think we have had some house like this on campus. <laughs> uh, so the idea was these guys wanted to make something that is a statement rather than uh, make something that is very regular. You can see outside also there are several 3D printed elements. This is a lamppost around which we place a 3D printed element. You can see again a hexagonal element here. There's also flower uh, pots that they've created with 3D printing. Outside, I don't know if you can barely make it out. This is actually a T-shape that is 3D printed for Twasta and so on. And this is just outside our cricket ground. This is a camp class cricket ground and this uh, building is just outside. Right. So I've shown you, our, uh, of course, you can catch the video on the on YouTube. I think that's a lot more interesting to see as far as how the house was built up. The, uh, I, I should also tell you the foundation was constructed as a regular strip footing with conventional concrete. There was nothing special. We dug a trench into the ground. We placed uh, con conventional <coughs> plain concrete inside and we had these uh, rebars sticking out of the foundation where the elements, the three printed elements could go and fix themselves onto the foundation. That's all. So nothing special there. Foundation was done in a typical manner. And the roof slab, sorry, I should go back to that. The roof slab was also done with in situ reinforced concrete. Okay. We created a form work supported from inside. We didn't want to waste time in this. Uh, we had several other ideas of printing horizontal elements and so on, but it was getting too late and we had to actually build this entirely through the cyclone. That was there last November. So we had a big problem in keeping up with the schedule. Uh, and because of that, we just said, okay, we'll go with conventional uh, reinforced concrete for the slab. Okay, that's what we did in this case. Right, so in four years of progress here, we've caught up with nearly 50% of the 3D printing concrete, uh, 3D concrete printing groups uh, across the world. Of course, there are a lot more uh, interesting examples from across the world that you can get, but with our limited uh, finance, and uh, uh, kind of uh, issues that we have in our country, we were able to execute this primarily because there was a good collaboration between Twasta and IIT Madras. We didn't really, really have to worry too much about the printing system. Twasta, on the other hand, used a lot of uh, our expertise to do R&D to get their printer right. So it was mutually beneficial. And uh, of course, for us, uh, we were able to execute this entire work at a budget that is one fifth of major budgets across the world. So that's a big, uh, uh, big achievement for us. Of course, uh, if we really have to get uh, in tune with the major players across the world, we need to scale up. And for that, obviously, we have to look out for more opportunities to get uh, funding to really take this up to the next level. It is an expensive research. Uh, uh, 3D printing is expensive from the research perspective. Because you need to have a printer to really print, to, to really do any research. And investing in a printer is an expensive proposition, especially when you want to invest in a printer at different scales. Obviously, it's quite expensive. Now, where do we want to take it forward? Basically, we want to create a toolbox for designs and methods which can be employed. And uh, typically, a client can really define the layout and architectural sensibilities. And we should be able to really pick out the right solution for a given client. Okay, And what we are thinking is we can break the 3D printed structure or a model down into standardized modules, which can be then printed, which can be also tested and uh, proven that they are effective and they should allow efficient printing and joining on the site. And again, manufacturing scale production has to be done for speed. Only then it will be very viable to really do uh, large scale construction with this technology. And again, we are hoping that with sustained R&D and support from the industry, maybe in another one or two years, we should be able to accomplish these kinds of time scales in the printing. For instance, toilets that I showed you like uh, what we had previously, six to 10 hours for a single toilet, single st story house in five days. The structure that we constructed took about 20 days overall. But I think if we break down the processes well enough, if we are able to integrate that with uh, something like BIM, we can then bring out single story houses within five days. Multi-storied G plus three at least can be conceived quite easily in less than a month. 
and off the grid construction as i said in remote locations deploying everything onto the back of a truck moving the truck to the remote location and doing construction that could also be accomplished hopefully in the future so again mass applications may be ready in another 2 years i don't think we are ready to go with that unless the industry is able to come forward in a big way so as i said combination of 3 years of research efforts led to the building of this 3d printed house and the interesting part is the technology is totally indian swasta really created the 3d printers from scratch they did their own research they made the had their own manufacturing and fabrication and so on they did not rely on any of course some of the controllers here and there they may have bought off the shelf uh, stuff from the market but uh, many other uh, uh, countries the research is carried forward by printers that are de developed in uh, rest of the world for instance in europe european printers are all over the place chinese printers are all over the place but we didn't buy any of these these guys made their own printers so totally it was a make in india initiative from the beginning and as, as i said we need to scale up and standardize the process if we really have to get anywhere with it. we also trained several human resources uh, in the along the way one phd has been completed in fact uh, the student who uh, got his phd from 3d printing is going to join iit tirupati as a professor soon uh um, we have one phd that's ongoing and several uh, other students also who got trained uh and publications also of course we got quite a bit with respect to 3d printing so thank you all very much of course you can also reach me out uh, reach out to me by email uh to to discuss anything more that you want from for this technology there are a lot of papers if you are interested in research in 3d printing i can share with you those papers but please write to me by email individually so that i can share those papers because those are uh, published papers uh, i cannot uh, openly share them on any platform uh, so if you can connect via email or via research gate if you want you can uh, request those papers so thank you all very much uh, and i'll be happy to take any questions thank you dr manu santanam a very interesting session um, definitely it gives us a wonder to see you know how technology helps us rediscover and you know reinvent ourselves through so i have already shared this uh, uh, questions with you i'm just posting it uh, sharing it here now okay uh, meanwhile if there are any more questions i request the participants to uh, you know write it in the chat box or raise your hand uh so probably some of it might have I, i'll just leave it to you to look through and answer pick and choose what you would want to answer sure so i'll, I'll maybe go through the questions how do the strength of 3d printed house we evaluated what is the durability as compared to conventional construction okay again uh, please remember we are making a layered structure so obviously there's going to be some limitations because of the layering on the strength so and secondly we need to create a standardized procedure for measurement of the strength we don't have the same procedure as we have for regular concrete right we can't mold it so that is the difficulty there but whatever materials we have printed we have got strengths all the way from 30 to 80 megapascals depending upon the mixture constituents so as far as strengths are concerned we don't need to worry definitely we can uh, uh, we, we can have very good uh, impact on the strength we can design the mixtures appropriately as far as durability is concerned once again these layers are going to be the primary uh, issue so if you are printing well enough that you get good bonding between the layers without any much time gap there you can really get a very good performance as far as durability is concerned that modular structure that i showed you we have assembled it and it's been exposed to rains for the last two years now and we have not had any major seepage that we have seen in the inside so again that shows that we have actually chosen this better when can we expect 3d printed houses in market for sale in india <laughs> okay again as i said uh, scaling up is very important without that uh, an individual coming up or rather an individual company like twasta because twasta they are technology providers they are not construction company right so for them to come up with uh, housing for sale in the market that will be next to impossible so they will obviously need to rely on industry support to to really get that to the next level and again i should tell you that twasta is a company that makes other 3d printed components also they are into making 3d printers and 3d printed components for other industries also not just for construction how many 3d printed houses have been built so far i i mean of course ac across the world there are several i i don't really know how many 
but I'd shown you some examples in Mexico. The, uh, in the US, actually, it's been commercially, uh, now it's commercially available. You can, uh, you can actually buy a 3D printed house, house in the US. I know that there have been other examples from Australia, from uh, Dubai, there's several construction projects and so on. And of course, China, several. Uh, Netherlands is really leading the way as far as research is concerned. Uh, 3D printing technology, how is it viable to build a house? I hope that I have answered that question through my presentation. Limitations, again, I've, I've brought out to you very clearly. Uh, right now, the plan for integration of reinforcement is not really very clear. We have to have a clearer plan of getting the uh, reinforcement integrated. We need to ensure that we understand how best we can optimize the material combinations. Because right now, most of the experiences across the world they are not using any coarse aggregate. They are using fine aggregate only, only sand. So it's more like a mortar, not really concrete that is getting 3D printed. So how much aggregate can we get into the system and still be able to print efficiently and so on? So those are several questions that we need to answer. How exactly is it useful, especially challenging point of view? I'm hoping that uh, you've understood the usefulness. Uh, could you explain about the mechanics of 3D printing technology adopted in civil engineering? Uh, I guess from mechanics, you need, you probably mean uh, the methodology of printing. I hope that uh, you've had a flavor of that from the presentation. Difficulties faced to make the project an industrially recognized project. Again, as I said, industry is risk covers in our country. They, it'll take a long time before they'll actually come forward to embrace this technology fully. We've had a lot of interest from industry, but mainly from the material providers because they are able to now formulate mixture proportions that can actually be used for 3D printing. But again, for them to try it out, they still need 3D printers, unfortunately. What material is used to build 3D house? Again, I showed you the material design. We primarily used a, a, a cementitious mortar, which had cement, fly ash, sand. Uh, we also had some quartz powder to obtain some particle packing. Uh, we used fibers to ensure that we did not get much uh, shrinkage cracking. Okay, We used a super plasticizer to get the flowability. And we used a viscosity modifying agent to ensure that we had sufficiently good buildability in the system. Uh, again, all those are captured in the paper. So if you want more details about the uh, mixed design, definitely write to me. I'll send you the papers and you should be able to refer to that. How to learn 3D printed house within short period of time? Uh, I don't know how short you mean short period of time. I hope it's not 45 minutes, but uh, if it is, I hope that my lecture has brought some uh, idea about this to you. Our polymers used to create pillars to make the house to be stable. I'm not sure what polymers are you talking about. All the components of the house were in concrete or as I showed you in some locations in masonry because we were uh, having an alignment issue in those locations. Software used for 3D printing. Again, uh, as far as the... Uh, uh, slicing software is concerned. So uh, the stages in 3D printing involve first making a model and then slicing it into two dimensional layers that can be printed. The slicing softwares, they are actually freely available on the net also. Uh, you can actually download much of the software from the internet uh, and uh, use that, use the modules from that to really do your own software. But there are uh, commercial softwares also now people are starting to come up with. But uh, this... Uh, Twasta actually had their own software. So as I said, we got complete printing support from them. We didn't really have to spend much time looking at software and printing. Uh, virtual reality and 3D simulation, as I, as I uh, already said, uh, we want to integrate that. This would be a great idea for a project in the future uh, as to how to integrate things like BIM into 3D printing. Load transfer, of course, depends on your structural design, uh, how the system how well you design the system to have the uh, transfer paths clearly defined and so on. Okay. So I think I've answered these questions, but there are several in the chat box. Yeah. Uh, okay, Sanand, uh, you uh, yeah. raise your hand. Go ahead. Yeah. Sir. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Uh, Professor, this is Anand from SRM University, sir. Hope you are. How, how so it's really wonderful and insightful uh, presentation, sir. As Thank you. Well. And a uh, few things like I just wanted to know certain things uh, because like we are talking like maybe this will be uh, whether this 3D build, uh, printing will be leads to more unemployment. So that's my maybe now it's very budding initial stage, but maybe in future, as you said, it's about uh, like uh, it's growing uh, uh, thing so that like maybe it may lead to unemployment. Maybe like I wanted to get some few words from you, sir. Okay, see, uh, in any solution is not the 
only answer. It's one of the answers. So 3D printing is just one of the ways in which we can revolutionize the construction industry. There are several other uh, ways and there are several projects where one would not be able to go beyond conventional construction at all. Yeah. So I don't think it's correct to say that a new technology can completely uh, uh, take away the need for jobs in the uh, industry and so on. Especially here, we are uh, going to create more jobs possibly for more skilled workers. Definitely a uh, greater skill is needed to make uh, these kinds of things possible. For instance, when you're talking about steel construction, right? When we construct with steel, with steel sections, we need skilled people to do the uh, the joineries like the bolting, the riveting and the welding has to be done by people who have skills. You can't have a con common laborer do those kinds of things on site, right? Mm -hmm. So you need people with skills. So maybe we will have a greater need for skill development when we deal with these new technologies, but I don't think it's going to take away uh, jobs in such a large scale, uh, right? Mm -hmm. it, it's it, That's not going to happen. It's not conceivable because it's not going to be proving to be a solution for the entire industry. It's going to probably help uh, take away some of the load from laborers, but I, I don't think uh, it's yes, not sir. really yes, going to be something. Yes, sir. I agree with you, sir, but still like maybe like upgradation, maybe we are talking about construction 4.0, maybe artificial intelligence, like uh, all these things are booming up, you know, like uh, so that like only it's my own concern because like maybe I'm working in uh, personal management. So human factors are usually... It's, uh, Absolutely. That's, what... that's very important. I mean, but the uh, issue is one needs to construct with uh, an eye on the time and the quality. Okay. And we can embrace technologies which actually help us do both, right? Okay. So I think technology-driven construction is the need of the future. One has to move more and more with technology. Yes. Okay. Thank you, Anand. Thank, uh, Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, so in the interest of time, I just stand corrected from what I spoke uh, in the beginning. Uh, Dr. Manasantanam has an appointment at 12 o'clock, an important appointment at 12 o'clock, and he has to leave. There are several questions, so we will try and uh, get them answered as much as possible. Otherwise, yeah, I will no, list no. out these questions to him and see if he can find uh, answer it at his convenience whenever it is possible. Sure, so I'll, I'll go I'll through these questions and I'll answer as many as possible. No problem. I will read it out for you, or you want to, to pick and choose? Uh, I can choose and then answer it. Yeah, quickly. that's fine. Yeah. So this uh, question on how to maintain bonding between conventional uh, concrete and three D printing. Now, again, in all concrete construction uh, between adjacent components, the uh, way to get connection is to provide keys. We need to provide keys or if there's reinforcement that is used for continuity, right? The same thing, even in a precast concrete, uh, there are some in-situ components that are created. So precast is also joined to the in-situ components by uh, extending some steel rebars from the precast and things like that. So there, there need to be some keys or reinforcement to join the just like in conventional construction. Uh, okay, one question for undergraduate project, can we use the IIT facility? Uh, again, please remember we are using Twasta facility. So it's outside. It is not really our uh, our, our own or IITM facility. It's, it belongs to Twasta and we are using their facility primarily. So I don't know if we can, I can answer that question. You'll have to probably contact Twasta. Uh, okay. 3D printing experiment has been in progress for the past five years. It looks like it will continue to be an R&D project for some more time rather than commercially made available for full-scale adoption. Ifs and buts uh, make this okay. So the feeling is the technology may be far-fetched or will it end up just like an R&D project in India? Again, please remember here I have demonstrated uh, something where we did not really adopt directly from the West. We created uh, our own way of doing things. And secondly, it is something that is scalable. But I, I already spoke about this uh, in my presentation that there were some steps that we need to really go through to scale it up. Standardization of the components of the modules of the testing, those kinds of things we need to really scale it up to really bring it to a level where it can be really used uh, in a larger scale. And I think definitely the idea can be conceived to be a solution for the industry. It's not something that will remain in the research realm. There is simply too much interest out there to keep it in the research realm. Okay, So definitely we'll have a lot more success. Uh, is it possible to drill a hole in the wall without using any bricks on the walls for mounting TVA? Good question. Now, this is always an issue, right? Uh, drilling a hole. Many technologies in India have not moved forward 
especially with walls, many technologies are not move forward because of this issue, right? Really, I mean, it's such a trivial issue, but it is a huge problem. Now with 3D printing, one of the advantages that you can have is while you are printing the layers, you can always intersperse those layers with a softer layer, right? And this softer layer could be something which can be at a height where typically we drill the holes. Of course, if you want to drill a hole everywhere, <laughs> it's not a good idea. You don't want to drill right through concrete. Of course, we have drilled in our house, we have drilled through concrete also, and it did not really give us any problems. It was steady enough to take that pressure. But yes, we, we have that option of printing softer layers. Sorry, I, I lost the... One minute. Maybe I should maximize the screen to see it better. Okay, yeah. Uh, due to this technology, will it cause great impact on precious graduates like no jobs since all works are mostly done in 3D printer? No, please, again, I, I think I've already answered that, but new technologies will create jobs for more skilled people, 100%. It's not going to take away. See, everybody thought when computer comes, the humans won't have any jobs. But no, look at how much progress we have made and how many jobs have been created by the software industry. The needs keep on increasing day by day. The same thing can happen with more and more technology adoption and construction and manufacturing. It's going to happen, definitely. Okay. Uh, how to maintain bonding? Okay, sorry, I answered that already. What about seismic and health considerations? So seismic issues obviously deal uh, depend a lot on how well you're able to reinforce. And as I said, that still remains a great challenge. How to create a suitable system of reinforcement that can lead to good seismic resistance? Again, topic for research, definitely. Okay. Foundation required for 3D structure. As I said, for a simple house like this, we just went with the regular plain concrete strip footing. I'm oh, sorry, a reinforced concrete strip footing where we had the reinforcement projecting out so we could join the wall components, the printed wall components to it. If you go for more intricate uh, or more uh, low, higher load bearing structures, multi-story and all that, you'll have to design foundations in a similar way. It's not going to be any different. Please remember, instead of regular walls, you just have concrete walls which are 3D printed. Instead of regular columns, you'll probably have concrete columns that are 3D printed. That's all. Okay. Um, Lifespan of these units in different terrains. I wish I knew the answer to that. I don't know the answer yet. I'm hoping that uh, the lifespan will be similar to any other concrete. And uh, the same kind of deterioration mechanisms will deal with 3D printed materials also, except for the fact, as I already told you, the layers are going to play a role in the performance. If, you are, if your initial design is good and your propagation is good, the layers will not really affect your structure much. Okay. Um, Slicing software, what is used in this printer? Uh, I, I have to check with uh, the Twasta people, but I'm sure that I can answer that. If you can send me an email, I can connect you with them. And uh, but as I said, they have their own in-house system, but a lot of people outside use what we call as a G code. Okay, And this is freely downloadable. Uh, you can actually get several modules from the internet directly. Okay, again, uh, another question about jobs and daily wages. Again, see, daily wages will have an issue, obviously, with uh, technology like this, because we are printing, we have lesser requirement for labor. But please remember, our emphasis on time and on quality will lead to choose this technology in locations where we are relying too much on people who are not skilled well enough. So you need to make that choice. Construction is driven a lot by economics. And that economics has to work out for a project to Im involve something like 3D printing. Uh, how did the startup company start and uh, what is, uh, how do they intend to go on? And the idea is really inspiring for future entrepreneurs. Definitely. See, again, as I said, they were a bunch of uh, graduates from IITM in 2016. They took the risk and started up their own company. See, it, uh, starting up companies involves a lot of risk. And I feel today's youngsters should take that risk. Take the risk. It's only a matter of two to three years. If you're good, definitely your risk will pay off. If you're good and your risk did not pay off, you'll be good enough to get into any industry that you want. So don't worry. 
getting a job right after your graduation is not an absolute necessity you have you are at an age where you can take these risks as i said starting up involves risks but then at that age you really have the bright ideas that can make these uh, possibilities okay reinforcement as i said yes uh, in 3d printing reinforcement can pose a problem but you need to design it well enough to use it uh, whether finishing of the house needs manpower that's a good question see in this case we did regular finishing with regular laborers and masons okay we had plaster we, which we put on top surface and used hand trowels and all to finish the surface but another advantage with this kind of an operation with a robot is that you can as well have a plaster spraying robot attached to the back of the printer and after the printing is done you can spray the robot uh, you can spray the plaster there are plaster spraying robots available in the industry already the same can be connected to the printer and you can automate the finishing process also so all those are possibilities a robot can really do a lot of things okay uh, important question comparison between cost of 1 cubic meter component made by conventional method and 3d printing okay in this house the square per square foot cost that came up for the material because this is an experimental house we experimented a lot we learned a lot we went wrong quite a few times and ultimately in this house the per square uh, square foot uh, cost was about 2500 rupees okay conventional construction costs less than 1500 but this was nearly 2500 because we were learning we did lot of things wrong and once we really get to uh, the mass scale operations i think that can be cut down quite easily to less than conventional materials because we are using less material we are making more structurally efficient and optimal structures uh will this bear better strength than conventional structure again it all depends on how you design it because ultimately structural design is what takes care of the uh, load bearing component medical field as i said Hello. Hello. Thank you, Lord. Sorry, I got disconnected. I think. Yes, yes, you are back, sir. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I was answering the question about uh, how Medical. tall can you build? Yeah. So I said uh, one of the things that governs that is the consistency of your material and the speed at which the material will retain its shape. So again, uh, you need to design your material well enough, fast enough, so that you are able to retain that speed. okay are there any design codes for 3d printing no nothing right now and that's what we need to uh, really design or rather do research on in the future right uh, we have again a question on life span okay in case some cracks form on the 3d printed wall will it co collapse after some time uh, again cracks forming in 3d printed wall will be because of load bearing ability problem which if you have not done a proper design will happen but if you have done a proper design the only other cracking that can happen will be probably because of shrinkage and that's again something you can design your material to uh, uh, to uh, properly avoid okay may i know water to cement ratio here we use a water cement ratio of 0.32 uh, this was a stiff mix because we were pushing it out through a printer uh, through a uh, through a pump okay so we can't use very large amount of water there okay i think that's about it as far as the original questions are concerned 3d printers consume a lot of energy 
I don't think that is correct. In fact, 3D printers, the amount of energy involved in actually utilizing these printers to calculate uh, electrical energy and everything. Uh, if you do a proper sustainability analysis, you may end up with uh, a much better option of doing 3D printing. So that's what we want to aim at in the future is to ensure that we uh, create structures where because of the optimal designs possible with 3D printing and also the fact that you can uh, optimize the use of the material, we can really have lesser sustainability impact or rather lesser adverse impact on the environment. Yeah, so again, in the absence of design codes governing 3D printing, how will authorities approve construction? Yeah, exactly. That's what I was saying. That's why I said we cannot have a deployment immediately. It will require a couple of years of research or at least adaptation to really get to the point of using it. Huge structures like dam, will it be possible? I mean, it will be inconceivable to use something uh, 3D printing for dams. I don't think it's... Uh, worthwhile to do that also right i mean again you need to choose your structures carefully where you can do this kind of work dams are simply too big right i think uh, we'll stop with that uh, i uh, i welcome any any questions from uh, by email no problem you can connect with me by email yeah thanks a lot uh, dr samana santanam i would now request uh, ms anuradha to conclude the session Thank you. yeah yeah, thank, a big, big thank you to Manasantanam as rousing start. We have had consistent uh, uh, stickiness to the point last. People have been interested in both in the talk, the topic, and uh, the interactions, useful interactions that we had as a follow -up to work with uh, your uh, department and yourself in future for this particular year. So I encourage all the students to uh, probably write your or ask your queries to the mail that he uh, posted. I hope Sujata will uh, give a feedback uh, form as well for this and uh, we'll consolidate and share it with the professor. Thanks a lot for all your time. It's a It's been a wonderful way to spend time today. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you, sir, for a really wonderful session. We enjoyed thank it. You, thank, you, thank you. Thank you, PVM, and thank you, Anu. So to all the participants, uh, Robin has posted the feedback link. Kindly spend a few more uh, minutes and give your feedback on, uh, on the session. Thanks a lot. All of you stay safe. Thank you. Thank you. Bye -bye. Thank you. Thank you, and bye. Thanks to all the PALS members who have joined. Thank you. Thank you, Sujata.